One of the projects I've been wanting to tackle for a long time is an outdoor hibachi grill. Luckily, we've partnered with Pit Boss and we got one of their five burner 36 inch wide griddles. For the first step of this project, we needed to build the overall structure. So we essentially built three walls that would encase the griddle. And then we built the table with four by fours as the legs and two by fours as the aprons. The walls were built out of two by four treated lumber so we wouldn't have to deal with any moisture issues with the structure. And then once we got the, the walls built as well as the four by four legs and the aprons, everything assembled, then we moved on to the tabletop. Now the tabletop was actually a little bit of an experiment. I didn't want to pour this whole entire slab in one shot. So what we opted to do was put a piece of exterior grade plywood down first and then we came back and covered the entire thing in cement board. Once the cement board was done, then we went ahead and started applying um, some joint tape to the, to the cement board where any joints were. And then we skim coated the entire thing with Kwikset's recoat um, concrete, which is actually meant for recoating any spalled or kind of worn old concrete. I hadn't really seen this done before on a project. However, it really turned out good. The one thing you gotta be looking for is if you're gonna do a project like this where you're skim coating concrete, is that the recoat from Quickset actually sets up really quick. They said it took about 20 minutes. However, I think it was less than that. And it ended up taking us longer to apply that thin coat of concrete than we thought. So we were kind of working against the clock. Now when it comes to finishing all the raw wood in this project, rather than staining all those boards and then adding some sort of waterproofing coating to that, we opted to go with a tintable deck stain, which is cool because we just go into Home Depot, pick the stain color we want, and then we've got a waterproofed finish with the stain built into it. With the board stained and waterproof, then we could go ahead and install those. And for that, I used a brad nailer as well as some construction adhesive, which is actually DAP's Dynagrip Heavy Duty Max. And that's gonna make sure that those boards stay in place. For the siding, we went with a one by eight shiplap board and we went ahead and cut those and then stained all of the sides. So we made sure that they were completely waterproof. Once the siding was in, then I could come back and cap the corners. And for that, I just took some one by sixes and I ripped those down so that they would make a nice, perfect 90. I tacked those in place and then applied that deck stain to those as well. And then came back and nailed them in with a brad nailer. For the face of this unit underneath the grill, I again used some one by sixes and we essentially built a face frame for the grill. And I've got one piece in the middle that is gonna be where the doors kind of come together. And we made those out of one by sixes and I kind of ripped down some boards to make that frame nice and neat. We assembled all of that with pocket holes. Um, and I was able to use on this project, I was able to use the new Craig 720 Pro, which is a really cool jig because it has, um, some features on it like the auto thickness adjustment where you kind of just clamp down the board into the jig and that positions the head of the jig in just the right spot. Once I got that front face frame, all the boards cut for it, I went ahead and applied that deck stain to that. And then once that was fully cured, then I came back and assembled the face frame and installed it to the front of the unit. To make sure that the concrete doesn't stain from grease and food and drinks and whatnot, I applied three coats of concrete sealer to the top and it gives it a really nice luster. Um, not too shiny, but not too matte. It's actually perfect for this top. Now 
Now it was time to install the griddle. Now I needed to modify the griddle a little bit to make it work, so what I ended up doing was cutting the legs off so that it would fit into this new nook that I had created in this table. I also needed to purchase a 90 degree fitting to make sure that the gas line would clear the structure and be able to go below the griddle. And then we also needed to modify the grease tray or chute rather coming out of the side of the griddle to extend beyond our interior wall so that it would fall in the new drip pan that would be located below the wall. To finish up this project, we had to assemble some doors and what I ended up doing was using that one by eight shiplap to create those doors and then I took some one by twos or one by threes and screwed all those to the back of those one by eights to sure up those doors and make sure that they were nice and flat. Then I found some overlay hinges on Amazon that could install those doors easily to the front face of that face frame that I built earlier. And last but not least, we installed a magnet on the side by the grill where you could kind of store your spatulas and whatnot while, while the griddle was in use. So when I designed this table, I actually designed it to be counter height, which is 36 inches off the ground. This is perfect for the griddle and using the griddle, standing up to it and whatnot. However, we needed to find some counter height bar stools and luckily we found those over on homedepot.com. They work great, they're very comfortable and they're outdoor. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love this project and I couldn't be happier with how it turned out. I know it's gonna get a ton of use, especially once spring rolls around. If you guys wanna make sure that you don't miss out on any future videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button right there. If you want the full plans for this project, that's gonna be in this link right there. Until next time, be safe and happy building.